Hey there, I just got back from a short trip, actually it was a week long trip, on a vacation, something that I do just about every year. My one good friend from my childhood has a group of us come for a girls week to her home at the Jersey Shore. And so I just returned from that last night and this was the first year actually the first time to be completely honest that I've been confident enough to bring a sketchbook and an art kit outside with me and sketch when I was around my friends other than the couple of friends that I have here who I I do do little art excursions with occasionally um, this is a group of friends none of them sketch or do art and so I was always hesitant to to bring my stuff because you know you don't want to get I don't know judged or feel uncomfortable but I just thought it was time this year was time and the second thing I did that was sort of major for me is I took my sketchbook out in public and I sketched at the airport on the plane um, at the beach and so not even just with my friends around but with complete strangers around and using strangers as models and that was sort of a fun eye-opening experience and since it was my first time I didn't want to forget all the things and feelings that I had while doing it and all of the sort of aha moments and so I wanted to share that along with uh, to share with you what I packed for this trip because I had to get on a plane and so I was limited with the amount of bags I could take on the plane with me and so I think I packed a fairly nice compact bag. But first hello and welcome to my channel and my home art studio. My name is Daphne. I am a former engineer turned amateur artist and I am on a mission to loosen up and make more art. It's been a minute since I've posted a video here on this channel, but I do hope to get going again and share my journey with you. As I mentioned in this video, I am going to be sharing with you what I consider to be my first experience my first official experience with urban sketching uh, of people. And um, let me just say one thing, the imposter syndrome is real and it's a struggle. <laughs> but enough talking. I hope you enjoy the video and I will catch up with you on the other side. This has all my art supplies in it that I took with me and this is the one little sketchbook I took. So I'm gonna go over all the things that I brought with me. I'm gonna talk about the things I used, the things I didn't use, my mindset when I was packing and how I feel now after the fact. So this is my little bag. It's great because it sort of is my art bag for traveling. I stuff this into a backpack the backpack was my one personal item and then I had a, a roll-on bag with all the rest of my stuff. So this was compact enough that it didn't, it allowed me to go on the plane without having to check any of my bags. So that was a high priority for me. So this bag is really nice, but it's super old. It has a spot for my glasses, my reading glasses, which I need. I tuck some extra pencils and pens in the front and my lip gloss just to have it but the art stuff is inside now these are the things I thought when I was packing would be important to have these are sort of the basics I'll get to that last let me do these two things and these two parts are the ones that uh, I think maybe I, I did use the watercolors. I'm sure you have something similar to this if you do any watercoloring. This is a little travel. I think this is called the compact kit. It's by Windsor and Newton. But it's the one that comes with the little water brush in it. I'm not 100% sure if they still sell it like this. But um, this is a really nice tiny compact set. 
I love the fact that it has six divided sections on the palette. It gives me plenty of room to mix the colors that I like. And these little uh, half pans, I think is what the size is, they, these little containers pop out and they, they actually sell them with the little pans separate from the little uh, rectangular boxes that they sit in. So I have actually, I think I did actually use all the paints in the set or most of them, but then before I uh, went on my trip, I actually replaced these pans with some of my favorite colors and the things that I thought I would use the most on this trip. So that is very subjective what you put in here, but I can say that these all happen to be Daniel Smith paints. Some of them I purchased in little sets that had um, the pans in them, and some of them are like the, the tube that I just squeezed in here, and you can kind of tell the difference from between the pans and the tubes, but they're, I believe they're all Daniel Smith except for maybe one or two of these. So this I used once, and I'll show you what I actually did with it in my book. So I would say next time this might be a maybe. I'm not sure if I would bring it up. I'm glad I had it with me, but I didn't use it a whole lot. And this pencil roll is the second thing. Now, I don't think I used anything in that you see here. There were some pencils that I pulled out and put into here that I did use. And so those were a definite yes. But for the first time doing this, I think that was part of the problem that this is the first time. And so I wasn't super confident and I wasn't with people who were doing art. So I didn't know how much time I would have once I got started. So basically what I did was sketching. And so I pulled out a couple of pencils and I'll show you what I actually did use in a minute. So this again, would I take this next time? Maybe. If I start using these a little bit more at home and I get really comfortable with them, then yes, I think they will graduate to my travel kit. But here are the basics. This is just an old like free giveaway makeup bag that is just perfect for my art supplies. So this is, I think it's like a hairband that I was thinking about using. Um, my thought was that if I went without my bag, if I was taking this to the beach or something, I could just do something like this where I could potentially take this bag. It really, I could really stuff all this stuff into this one sort of little kit that I can take with me. And it's just kind of nice, but I didn't end up doing that. I had a beach bag and I had all my stuff in the beach bag, so that wasn't necessary, but that's that was the thought at least on that. Obviously paper towels. Now I, I did uh, plan on bringing like a, a reusable like washcloth or something small that I could uh, clean off my, my brush onto, but I just, uh, I never got around to that. A little spray bottle, again, if you're using watercolors, that's nice to have, important to have, as is a water brush. So I didn't use the little water brush that came with that. I actually used this one the one time I used it. And as a backup that I did not use, I have one of these uh, little travel brushes. So nice to have, but for some reason I didn't pull that out. I just used my water brush. Okay, a clip so that if it's windy, you can clip the book open. I'm not sure if I used that, but I probably could have used it. A sharpener for my pencils. Now here are the pencils that I did pull into my kit that I was using. I have uh, two Prismacolor, just regular color pencils that are not water soluble. Um, I sharpened this one a lot. Every time I sharpened it, it would break. So I don't know if there was something wrong with the pencil or if my sharpener just wasn't the best. But these are the two that I actually used the most in addition to my favorite graphite pencil, this Graph Gear 500 that I have um, either HB or 2B 
lead in here. I'm not sure, but it's a softer lead than what came with it. And this is a Derwent Ink Tense Payne's Gray. I thought I might use that for just doing some basic shading and blending with a brush, but I did not. But that would probably be the next thing I would add to uh, what I've already done in here. And then this is a French Gray Watercolor Pencil, Prismacolor. I found this is awesome for if you want to just like sort of sketch out your perspective lines or some really super light sketching if you're confident enough to kind of go directly in with ink or with a darker colored pencil or something that you're not planning on erasing this is a great way to start because when you do go ahead and add water later it practically disappears especially if you're going to be adding more colors and watercolor on top of it it just blends out so that's kind of a neat little tool to have there if you're trying to get away from using a graphite pencil and erasing but still want to sort of get some guidelines in there and uh, this was the main pen that I brought with me and I think I did do a little bit with this pen and you may recognize it you may not because this is a platinum carbon pen and they normally have a really long skinny I don't know what you call the shaft and I had my husband cut it off because two things about this pen bother me. Uh, the length of it is just kind of a little awkward. It doesn't quite fit. I don't think it fit completely into this pencil roll that I had. And, but the most annoying thing about this when I bought it is the cap on it did not connect, did not register, I think is what they say. It doesn't, it didn't sit properly on the base of the pen, so I was always having this loose cap that I was always worried about losing. The thing that I love about this is it does have really nice flow and a super fine point and line. Uh, and so this actually is one of my favorite pens in terms of the functionality of what, you know, the amount of fine detail that you can get with the tip of it. But uh, that one annoyance was taken care of when my husband chopped off the end for me. And it's leaking a little bit here. A uh, thing you want to be careful about, especially when you're taking loaded fountain pens with you, is I think just the fact of going up in the plane, the lower pressure, and then going back on the ground. You could have ink leaking out of it. This actually did leak when I got to the first airport. I took it out, and the first thing it did was drip ink all over my book. It was one little ink, ink drop. It wasn't super bad. It didn't hit my clothes. So it was fine, but you just do want to be careful. And I also live at a higher elevation here. So that's also a thing. So I was in New Jersey, which is, you know, probably sea level or just above. And here I am at a higher elevation. So I do have to worry about that pressure difference affecting the ink in here. I brought this as my favorite white gel pen, the uh, Uniball Signal. Did not use this. So yeah, that's it. And the last thing, two things I have in here are my erasers. Uh, this is just a basic, I think it's a white plastic eraser, Statler, I think. And in here is my kneaded eraser. And I love this, this is my favorite eraser it's so nice because you can shape it into to get like really fine details if you need to it doesn't create any of the, the eraser bits that this creates when you erase so it's a lot cleaner the one thing that I would uh, warn against though with this is especially if you're going to something like a beach town where there's sand I was really worried. Be uh, sand got into everything. It's even it's in my pages right now. You'll probably see it. I did not want to get sand in here because I feel like once it's in there, it's it's going to be impossible to get out. And I didn't want this to have any like abrasive material in it, so that the next time I took it out to to use it, I would damage my paper. So this did not come out of the container when I was actually on the beach. But I still worry about it because I, I do have to clean everything out here. 
because of all the sand that I have in it. So let me set all this stuff aside. So I guess the, the short answer to what would I bring next time, definitely a sharpener, definitely my erasers, definitely at least one clip. And this stuff I think is really dependent on how much time you have. And if I had time back in a hotel room, I was on vacation and I knew that I'd have a lot of downtime back at the room, then definitely yes, I would I would bring my watercolors and everything that I need with it for sure. In this case, I was staying at my my friend's house and there was a large group of us and I knew that we'd all be interacting and, and doing, I didn't have like a whole lot of downtime when we were back at the house. And so I didn't feel like I, I needed to pull this out. And so I didn't. And I also don't really like pulling this out when I'm uh, in public either. Just not quite there yet. This is sort of a confidence building thing. So having my little book and having my pencil, that was something I managed to do at the airport on the plane when I was waiting to between flights and, and to get on my flight home. Uh, so I had lots of time at the airport and it was a perfect opportunity to get my sketchbook out and sketch live people. So I'll tell you about that experience in a minute. But the rest of the stuff in this packet, yes, I would absolutely, that's gonna be with me all the time whenever I take my sketching materials with me. And this stuff, I hope to these pencils and water, these um, watercolor pencils, which are these over here. Some of these are water soluble, some of these are not. I'm getting to that point where I start to incorporate these into my work more. As I'm, I'm trying to get more expressive with my work, right now I'm still a little bit, I feel like I'm a little bit tight. And because of that, I'm, you know, my pencil and my pens and one or two of these, these pencils, they're still my best friends because I can be a little bit more precise with them. And when I get comfortable using these here, I'm sure they will find a place in my travel art kit. Okay, so I pulled this out a couple days before my trip and I just wanted to sort of break it in so I wasn't going there with a blank uh, sketchbook, which is always very intimidating. And I am super comfortable drawing portraits and figures. And so I can't remember where this came from. This I think came from it used to be called Sketchy, it's called Museum now. It's an app where people submit pictures for you to draw and paint. And so that was my reference. I had a photo from there that I used for this, this one and for this one. And so, and then I started drawing some birds before I left. So this is the first sketch that I did on my flight. This was my first flight of the day on the way out there. And you can see there's sand in here. So when I took this on the beach, I don't know if you can see that. When I took this on the beach, the sand, it was very windy and the sand was blowing. I need to figure out how to get that out of here without getting it everywhere. But I was super happy with the way this turned out. It was a lesson in perspective for me, but I felt super comfortable because None of these people that I was drawing, other than there was the guy sitting next to me who you can't see here. This, this is a guy across the aisle who was sleeping on his hand. But this is just the legs of the guy who was sitting, fortunately not right next to me. He was one seat over. So I think he caught me sketching him. <laughs> I was trying to be very stealth about it. I just didn't feel super comfortable doing it. But once I got into it, it was super fun to do this. So I actually sketched this in pencil, just with my uh, my Graph Gear pencil, and then I went back over with a Prismacolor blue uh, pencil. And so that was that. And this probably took me, I don't know, like an hour and a half 
I think, to sketch that. This is when I got the, to the house and we were all sitting on the deck and chatting. I was just sketching them and it's funny because they just kept moving. <laughs> they kind of knew I was sketching, but you know, I wasn't making anyone stay still, but it was nice having a, friends that I, you know, I wasn't feeling super self-conscious around. And so somebody would sit here and then they would switch. One would get out of the sun and move over here. And so I was kind of just trying to catch them as I could. This is the same, the same person. <laughs> she was sitting over here and then she switched places and went over there. And I was, I had made my way over to the side of the, the deck at that point. And so she ended up being in here twice. And then there were lots of legs. So this was the legs of one of my friends who was sitting next to me on this side. And then I did have, I started to do the foot of my other friend who was sitting on the left of me, whose feet were up on the table there. But then I just never finished it. And I think afterwards, so this was all in pencil originally, and afterwards when I had some time, I think at the airport, I started going over some of the lines in my blue uh, Prismacolor pencil. So this one's still a work in progress. I am going to finish it. I'm definitely going to finish getting the lines on here and maybe adding this foot back in. Uh, and then I may actually add some color to this. Uh, if I do, hopefully I will uh, record that and I'll show you how that turns out at least. This was the the next day, I guess, yes. So this is the first day. I didn't date it, but I'm going to. And I'm gonna add some little notes around here and maybe some color swatches just to make it more fun. Um, this was the first day that we actually hit the beach. This was Tuesday, so that was Monday. This is Tuesday. These were some strangers that were off in the distance. So I started with them because uh, they couldn't tell. He kept looking over at me, but <laughs> there was, I don't know, maybe he knew. It's very intimidating when people start looking at you when you're sketching them. Like you don't feel comfortable. I didn't feel comfortable like staring right at them and letting him know that I was drawing him. But so I was trying to, I was trying to do it secretly. And these were just two of my friends sunbathing. So they were, they were easy other than the fact that they just kept moving. But it turned out, okay, I'm happy with this. And again, I went back over this, I think, when I was at the airport, but I still have some lines I need to finish filling in. So this is the only time I used my watercolor. It started out with a, yeah, I think I went, I did go right to ink on this one. So I used my uh, platinum carbon pen and this was just like a row of flower pots that my friend Jill had sitting on her deck. And so I thought it was a perfect opportunity to just do a little still life. This was, she had a pot of basil sitting on the end, so I moved this up later on. And so these were done directly in ink, and then I just added some of the texture lines, and I added just a tiny bit of watercolor just to give it a little bit of interest on the page. And then this... Like I said, was the basil. I just sketched that in pencil. And then as we were leaving, on the day we were leaving, she had her dog, um, her husband brought her dog and their daughter's dog over. They were the cutest little things. And as we were leaving, they were like looking out the window at us and I snapped a picture. So when I got to the airport, I, that was I needed something for this part of this page. And they seem like the perfect addition. So still need to work on this page a little bit, but this was sort of the start of that layout. And then this is, this the last, nope. Yeah, this is the last day. So on Thursday, we went back to the beach. And so my friend, my three friends are here. She, this one had to be by the water with her feet in the water <laughs> the whole time. So she was a little bit removed from us, but I thought it was kind of funny to draw her in the background. And then this is um, legs again, and uh, two of my other friends, Jill and Jody. So again, this one's not done. I switched to a brown, dark brown Prismacolor pencil on this one when I started doing my final lines, I, but I still do have to 
complete the lines on here. Oh, I forgot about this one. This was, again, another view on that same day, the, um, the lifeguard stand, and it had the boat with the, uh, I guess, the rescue boat. Um, so I need to finish this. I did, however, take quite a few reference photos. So while I was there, I realized after the first day when people kept moving <laughs> that it would be really helpful to take photos of people if I if I'd started putting them into the, the drawing and I didn't want to have to change it. And I'm not great with doing things from my imagination. I really do need to, I still need to see things in order to draw them properly. So I could always go back and refer to those uh, reference photos that I took. So I will probably be using them like if I go back and finish this drawing right here with the boat and everything. It's, it's almost done, but... Now, I had a long wait at the airport. My plane was delayed, I got dropped off pretty early. And there was a group of young, they, they seemed like students, like maybe teenagers, who had just come back from some uh, trip, maybe with their class. And so they were all like hanging out at this one table where they could charge up their computers and, and chat and eat and whatever. So they were, it, that was fun to draw them, although they didn't sit still. I mean, unless they were sitting on their, looking at their phones, usually I'd have like maybe two or three minutes, which was just enough to capture them in that position. I, I'm not sure if I took a reference photo. I may have taken one afterward, and but they had all moved already. But yeah, so that was a fairly quick sketch. And that was my first, my first time like really um, drawing strangers who were close enough where they could sort of catch me drawing them and because they were teenagers and you know they're so into their phones and into their friends they don't notice anything so that was a very easy transition for me to start sketching people because they didn't look up once I don't, I don't think any of them noticed that I was sketching them but then I moved <laughs> and I moved over to a different table it got crowded there was a different flight getting ready to go on and so these were some adults that were sitting at that same table, but I had switched, switched seats. So I was kind of looking at them from a different angle. Adults are a little bit more <laughs> aware of what's going on around them. And so I'm pretty sure he caught me. Every time he looked over at me, I would just like look away or I'd look down at my book. But then you're kind of afraid to look back up again because if they're still looking at you and you look back up to them, you're kind of caught. <laughs> so if he kind of looked over at me, I'd look down at my book and then I'd look somewhere else and I'd start drawing somewhere else, someone else. So that's when I started drawing these three people. They were quite a distance away from me, but I just sort of changed. You know, I brought them in closer. And so this was actually a woman. I know she didn't, her hair was cut really close and I, and I, she was the only one who I think was looking at me and, and so I got very uncomfortable. So I couldn't, I didn't get a really good look at her. I just kind of like, kind of winged it a little bit on her. These two were good, but he was, and I kind of moved him over one seat. He was actually sitting on the seat over here. And then I thought it would be nice to put him next to her. So again, she kept looking at me. <laughs> when I was looking at him, she was, she was kept noticing. So I felt uncomfortable even looking at him, even though he was fully engrossed in his phone, these two guys. Um, but yeah, that was, that was kind of fun. And these are just pencil sketches at this point, but I do plan to go back with colored pencil and maybe some, uh, some watercolor. And this was when our plane finally pulled up to the gate. I turned around and I started drawing that. Now there were people sitting right in front of the window and I just thought it was important to add them in even though they were like 
very close to me and she kind of caught me looking at her. I think they both kind of caught me looking at, at them, but neither of them said anything to me. So that was okay. But I wish, and I ended up taking a picture, I think, just of the window. I But it had like a, by the time I took the picture, you can see more of the reflection than you can of the actual plane out there. So I don't know if I have something good to go back to and look at here. But I think that was the last, yeah, that was the last sketch I did. So I will be going back and finishing these. But I did want to share my, basically my first time experience of sketching in public. It is a little bit nerve wracking. I had one person that actually commented, he was sitting next to me when I was drawing the kids. I was drawing the kids and I think I was working on maybe the dog, this dog sketch. I'm not sure which one he, oversaw but after I put the book away and he caught my attention he made a comment and he, and he asked me if I was an artist and even though I tell everybody like look you don't have to be selling your work or having gone to art school to call yourself an artist if you're creative and you're making things you can say you're an artist that's okay but uh, yeah I don't always practice what I preach he asked me if I was an artist and I said oh no I just draw I just sketch but he gave me a really nice compliment and it feels good, but it's also, it is also a little bit intimidating. Like I got up and I moved after that just because, I don't know. I mean, I, I thanked him <laughs> and I thought it was really sweet. But when I came back, I ended up finding a different seat and um, partly because it's, I don't, I honestly, I don't know why. It wasn't intentional. I just ended up in a different spot, but also, I did feel a little bit less, after he commented on what a great artist he thought I was, then I felt a whole lot of pressure, like, oh my gosh, now I feel like I either have to do something really awesome, <laughs> or, um, I don't know, he might be like, oh, maybe she really isn't a good artist. I don't know. I do need to get over myself. and. That's kind of why I'm sharing it. I assume that a lot of other people have very similar thoughts when they first get started uh, sketching in public. And so I just wanted to share that. But I feel like now that I broke the ice, now that I've done it once, I had sort of like an intense uh, few days of where I was sketching in front of my friends and then in front of strangers. I now feel a lot more confident to just go out and, and do it more often. So. We shall see how this goes. I do plan to finish these, and so I will, if I don't actually record the process, I definitely will record a flip through of this journal when it's all done, so. Well, if you are also in the early stages of your journey to get more expressive with your art, or if you are just trying to build the confidence to take your sketchbook out in public and make art in front of other people. I hope that you found this little peek inside my travel art uh, kit and uh, inside my brain uh, to be helpful. If you did, I would truly appreciate any likes or shares. Uh, it really helps to grow my channel. Also, I would love it if you would share in the comment section about your first time sketching in public or your thoughts and confidence building strategies that you've used to get yourself out there. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to catch you in the next one.